We can never, never, never forget about this when fall bass fishing. Well, my buddy over at Low Brow Fishing mentioned a video that I did about a year ago about this very topic. When I saw that, I thought to myself, you know what? It probably would be good to do a refresher video on this because there are so many new viewers to the channel in the last 12 months and may not have seen that video that we are referring to. In the fall, and it's important that it can happen in the spring too, but in the fall specifically, when we get those really cool or even cold overnight temps, we cannot underestimate the power of the sunshine on hard structure the next day. And those cooler temps can vary from the south to the north, but the idea of much cooler than normal is the key factor here. So for example, for me up here in the northern part of the Midwest, uh, when we've got daytime temps in the 60s and all of a sudden those overnight temps are getting down in the low 40s or high 30s, this is an absolute dynamite thing to look for, especially if we've got a high bluebird sky, a high sun the next day. That hard structure is going to absorb the sun's energy and radiate it back out into the water. And here is just some amazing footage of bass sunning themselves on rocks. And what we can't forget about as anglers is this can happen in really shallow water. Water less than a foot is completely normal for this. Well, if you think about many bluebird days when we're out fishing, how often do we not even check water out in the open with no shade, no cover to provide shade whatsoever, and check that shallow water for bass? There's no cover there and we miss them. We go right by them. Well, when you have got those super cold nights, sun the next day, look for that hard cover. Rocks are my favorite, but seawalls work really well. Wood can even work well to a point if that's the hardest cover in your body of water. And also dark spots. If you're fishing in the boat or walking along the shoreline and seeing dark spots, a darker bottom composition than other places in the lake or river, that is a great place to check. And as far as narrowing water down, this almost exclusively happens on the north bank or the north shoreline. Yes, there are other places where, you know, it's going to happen around a body of water, but that north side, because that sun is low in the sky, is going to get more of those direct rays to warm up that hard structure. And let me tell you, when you're working down the shoreline and all of a sudden you see 15 or 20 bass in a very small area, really shallow, warming up in the sun, it is so tempting to throw right there on top of them. But we need to try to identify or guess where this is going to be happening before we ever get to it. This is where some map study works out really well. Google Earth works out really well. If you've got those conditions I talked about, cold night, bright sun the next day, identify places on your body of water that you have hard cover or structure and where this could be happening. Then as you approach it, start farther out and work your way in. Oftentimes the bigger bass, the better bass are going to be just a little bit deeper than the ones that are all the way up shallow sunning themselves. If that doesn't work, then what I have found works the best for me is take something like a wacky rig or a Ned rig, throw it up there and you have to leave it sit. You have to let it dead stick. When they're up there shallow like that, they're going to see your lure. They're going to see it drop in there. But what we can't do is just overwork it or bombard the spot with a bazillion cast. You're going to go ahead and put them on alert and they're going to move out of that area temporarily. So put something up there, let it dead stick, leave it sit there as long as you can and let the natural currents in the water go ahead and move that lure for you. And so often the bite is extremely subtle. You're just going to start to see the tiniest twitch in your line or it's going to start to move off. That's where something like a high-vis braid to a leader can really help out. And then if you think that you did startle those fish, put them on alert, let it rest for a few minutes and come back to it probably with a different lure presentation. But when they are just catching that radiated heat off of those rocks or whatever it might be, and if they are startled, they're just going to slip away and they're going to come right back 
to it. So if you have a group of these areas on your body of water, it's one of those situations where you can keep hitting from one to the next and keep working your way around and let them reload. It can be an excellent way to catch bass in the fall when so many people are completely overlooking what's going on in that really, really skinny water. And hey, if you'd like to watch a video that talks about uh, fishing lily pads and maybe how we approach it wrong sometimes, go ahead and check this one out right here. And make sure that you go out and encourage someone today. You never know how you might just change their life. For the Bass Fishing Life, I'm your host, Steve Rogers.